Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Hello everyone, welcome again to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app and use the code BEARBETS, that's the code BEARBETS, two words, for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets. I have a very happy co-host today, as Oregon Ducks pulled off the small, teeny upset of Ohio State in a great game on Saturday night in in Jella. It's funny, Jeff, like everyone, the only thing they're all talking about now is what Dan Lanning did on that final drive (laughs) on Saturday night. And immediately in that, the the group thread with the, uh, the big news folks, I said, he had to have done that on purpose. And sure enough, yep. It wound up. He, that is just, that's why Dan Lanning is the man. Yes. Dots all the I's crosses all the T's has a plan in place for all these situations. And now because he exploited the old rule and was smarter than the rule writers and the, they all, we're going to change the rule now. Too bad. Good for Dan Lanning. Yeah. Good for Oregon for getting that win. And uh, I think it was probably the first two meetings that we're going to see from the, uh, the ducks and the Buckeyes this year, but uh, good, good for you. Good for your program. Thank you. No. And what's funny is, as you were talking, I'm, I'm looking at social media before we started and they actually officially changed the rule. Like it's now, it's now officially changed to where after the two minute time, after the two minute timeout in either half, if the defense commits a substitution foul and it has 12 or more players on the field, then the, the team, the, the team that, that, you know, the, the offense team essentially can choose to reset the clock or not. However, if a player is running off the field and he's the 12th guy, so he's not intentionally sort of on the field, right there, mm-hmm. the, uh, it goes back to the original rule. Which basically allows the clock to to you know to run off in that in that instance. So look, uh, people have asked sort of you know, why did Dan Lanning admit this? Well, why not Bear? Because it's a one time use. It's a golden gun, right? You use it yep. one exact time, especially yep. with the media now and how we watch football, how we consume football. I mean, as soon as it was done, there were big accounts on social media talking about the play. So you, it's a, it's a golden gun. You use it one exact time. He used it one time. Um, the only thing that is a little frustrating coming out of that. And I understand why Ohio State is favored if we meet again. I, I get it. They're an incredible team with pros all over the place. But the final score maybe wasn't exactly how the game went. Oregon left a lot of points on the board, Bear. A fourth down where a guy was open, he didn't throw the ball, missed PAT, a missed field goal, and then the interception on the first drive where let's just say Oregon is even scoring that on the interception. But that's seven less points for Ohio State, Bear. So that game, even though it ended up being a one-point game, felt like – Oregon played really well. I can't wait to play them again, which I think we're, we're on a kind of a crash course because, look, Penn State beat USC in a three-point game where their tight end had to have, like, 23 catches to win that game. Mm-hmm. And USC, I think we both agree, is not very good. The narrative, by the way, that USC is three plays away from being 6-0 has got to stop because let's say Penn State misses the field goal, Bear. Still have to win in overtime. Let's say they rule that, 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 that the Minnesota quarterback uh, fumbled the ball, Brosmer, before the goal line. Yep. USC still has to go down and score and win the game. Yep. Like, they're multiple plays away from winning, not just one play away. Stop saying that. So I'm, I don't really yeah. trust Penn State. There's still, still something about them. I think Ohio State beats Penn State in a couple of weeks in Happy Valley and Oregon and Ohio State meet again. And I'll, I'll end with this, Bear. I, um, I'm i not an overwhelming fan of the 12-team playoff. I didn't think it was needed. But I will say emotionally during that game, a little bit of me – to not feel that weight of one loss ruining our season where like if we We're lost that, if we lost that game in any form or fashion, one point, 10 points, 12 points, 14 points, whatever it was, 
we still make a playoff. In the previous iteration of this, one loss, yeah, you have to win out and beat him again. You're, you're not going to make the playoffs. So I, from that perspective, I did sort of like that the 12-team playoff exists now. I, I, th- I think it was funny. I said something along the lines to like, it was an unbelievable day. It was an unbelievable game. But in the grand scheme of things, the game kind of sort of really didn't matter in the no. grand scheme of things, which is kind of sad and crappy to say. Well, but Bear, I, wait, but, but Bear I, I, okay, from like the macro perspective, right? Like an overall, like, does it change the odds for who wins the championship? It didn't really move, right? Ohio State still had Oregon. Does it change who wins the Big Ten? Yeah, Oregon kind of went ahead of them. But for <laughs> on the micro level, for each program, it mattered a lot, right? Because think about what, you know, the win for Oregon, but think about the Ohio State side, right? Like your defense, there's some conflict now, right? They, they haven't sacked the quarterback. I think I'm right on this. In like the last five big games they played, uh, they haven't forced a punt in the fourth quarter. I think the last five or six big games they played against Michigan, Oregon, you know, playoff game and whatnot. Like, it, so th- on the micro level for each team, it matters a lot. But you're right. On the big picture level, Right. Yeah, it, it doesn't change much of how I think we both view the season. I could certainly see Ohio State beating Oregon down, you know, in, in Indianapolis, Bear. Like, that's not sure. out of the realm of possibility, and they will both be playoff teams, and they might play a third time in the postseason. Yeah, just like if Georgia and Alabama were to, were to play again, yeah. Georgia very easily would, would beat them as well. Yeah. So it's, I mean, the home field matters, it's, and there's so many plays here and there within one possession games that, that skew things one way or another. But one one angle that, He's kind of been getting a little bit of play out there. And it happened last week. We had Penn State going to the West Coast. You had Ohio State going to the West Coast. And it's certainly been uh, a deal with like these teams with the, the conference expansion and the super conferences, teams from the East Coast traveling two time zones to the West Coast and then vice versa. How it's been very difficult for these teams making that two time zone jump yeah. uh, to go out there and, and play well. Now, look. Ohio State very easily could have won that game. Yep. Penn State did win that game. But you look at Indiana, I think, was the only one uh, to wind up covering, like when they went to UCLA yeah. and wound up blowing out a terrible UCLA team. Now, now this week, what, you've got USC traveling back east again. You've got UCLA traveling yeah. to, to Rutgers. Like It feels like it's a little bit tougher <laughs> yeah. going west to east than it is the other way. Yeah, and if you look at, like, Stanford did beat Syracuse, but then did not cover against Clemson, didn't cover against Florida State. Uh, they did cover against Pitt last week. So, you know, it, it, I think it depends. But also, you know, let's focus on the, on the Big Ten teams, right, Bear? So, like, USC, right? They're not very good in the trenches. They can't sack the quarterback no. and can't protect the quarterback. Like the line that, is terrible. that doesn't travel on the road. So even if you're going one time zone over, it's not going to travel, right? And so now you go to multiple time zones over against teams you've never played against, and that's part of it too, right? You've never played in Minnesota. You haven't played in Maryland. That's going to be a problem. Washington, okay, is a, is a, they have a lot of good football players, but they're supremely undisciplined, right, Bear? Penalties, some, some bad plays. Guess where that's worse, Bear? On the road. On road. the road, it's worse, right? And then UCLA just stinks. Now, they keep covering these games, and we'll talk about them later. So, you know, I think part of it is just like, the things these teams do bad are exacerbated on the road. And then in a lot of these games too, the favorite is winning, which isn't that surprising. So like Washington lost at Rutgers, Washington lost at Iowa, Michigan lost at at Washington as an underdog. So to me, it's not like that big of a deal, but I think Mm -hmm. if you have issues on your team with discipline and blocking and tackling, that does show up more on the road. And I think we're going to see this weekend, we don't talk about, USC and, and Game of I'd like Maryland to cover this game at seven and a half. I don't think Maryland's very good, but again, USC has not shown the ability in conference play, especially on the road, Bear, to, to be very confident and, and, and make the plays necessary, especially end of the game, uh, to, to cover these games. So it is a thing. I, I think it's really a thing that we have to watch now. It's it's not a, a big sample size, 13 games in the Big Ten, Bear, but it's not it's not nothing. No, it's not nothing for, for sure, but yeah, I don't think it's a it's not anything to overreact to. But uh, we mentioned going on the road. Uh, obviously, the biggest game of the week, number five, Georgia going on the road to number one, Texas. Uh, we'll cover that and so many more of the big games this weekend in the gambling group chat with myself, Jeff, Sammy P, and Will. Enjoy. Time again for the gambling group chat. Myself and Jeff joined, as we are every week, by Sammy P and Will Hill. Uh, this is a monster 
weekend. As good as that Oregon Ohio State game was last week, two versus three, uh, I think this game between Georgia and Texas has a heck of a lot more of an impact in the college football playoff and potentially teams getting in, getting out, who's going to be the top overall seed, uh, getting into it, then Ohio State, Oregon. Uh, right now, we're looking at Texas three and a half uh, point favorite over the Bulldogs, who are going to be an underdog for the first time in uh, about four years. Seems certainly that we have not gotten the best game uh, yet this year from George. I know that the Clemson second half, uh, they, they played really well. The Alabama second half, obviously, their offense was great. But it just doesn't seem like George is able to kind of shift out of spinning their wheels a little bit in the mud. I would be absolutely shocked, Will, if this was not George's best effort, uh, best game of the year this week. Question is, do you think it'll be enough to walk out of Austin with a win? I like Georgia. And and to your point, I think maybe just all of our collective bars are just too high for Georgia and for these better teams because we saw Ohio State lose last week. We saw Bama lose the one. Uh, We saw Georgia lose the one. It's just I think we have in our head some of those great Bama teams with the great receivers in 2017, 18, the great Burrow LSU team in was that 2019. It's just I think even the Georgia team two or three years ago, it's just I think with NIL and the portal, the, the talent. I've heard people say it's watered down. It's not watered down. It's just more spread out. It's more NFL like p- p- parity in terms of, you know, these these top teams are just not as dominant. Uh, in Georgia, look, they don't have the same guys up front defensively. They don't have the same, you know, the Bowers, the McConkie. They don't have that go to weapon. That being said, has Texas proven enough here, Sammy, to be like a three and a half, four point favorite? Okay, that was a nice win in Michigan, but that's not like that's aged incredibly well. Um, if I could see this being an over game because I don't think either team is going to run the ball with a lot of success. And if the ball's in the air, that stops the clock that leads to big plays. And, you know, another theme watching these big time games, Bama, Georgia, Ohio state, Oregon, I got burned with this last week. It used to be, Hey, big game. You play the under these, there's a little feeling out process. Good defense, good beats, good offense. That's not the case anymore. Good offense seems to trump good defense nowadays. So Sammy, I like Georgia. I like the over. I don't know if you have anything on this game. It was scary to watch Texas flip that switch against an Oklahoma defense that is still very solid, guys. I mean, we're talking about a 3 nothing game that was bang, 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 what, 21-3. to three. Like, I went to go make a sandwich and came back, and Texas has a three-score lead. That's how quick it is against a good Oklahoma defense. Horrible offense, Bear, Oof. as you talked about last week. And I think they have some good news on the way. Some of their guys are coming back at receiver. They needed those guys last week. But we think about where numbers were and where numbers are. And in the summer, Georgia is a two and a half, three point favorite. Now, Georgia is a three and a half, four point dog. So is that move warranted? Is it justified? Texas has been awesome. I think we can give them an A for their season so far. But the question is, have they played a team with a bunch of NFL talent? And the answer is very simple. It's no, at least not yet. Toughest test of the season biggest number of the season in terms of laying it against Georgia. And I also, I also wonder about this. I'm not going to give you a bet because I'm not going to bet the game, but does the Georgia fall down against Alabama when they went down huge at half? Has that aged better or worse? I would argue it's worse given we just saw Alabama lose to Vanderbilt and sweat it out against South Carolina. So maybe that Georgia first half against Bama isn't as good as we initially perceived it to be. I'm not going to bet the game. I mean, this is a total coin flip. I would Historically, I would take the SEC team that's a powerhouse catching points. That is the Georgia role in this game. But Texas is Texas is freaking loaded, guys, on both sides of the ball. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, I'll give you two things that concern me about Georgia in this game, right, guys? Uh, it's their first half scoring, 89th in the country. They're averaging 11 points in the first half of games. If you get down, if you get down this game, yeah, you might have – an Alabama S comeback, but you're probably not winning the game if you start slow. And then secondly, they're like in the 80th for, uh, 80th ranking bout for, for third down offense as well. So if you can't convert third downs against a good Texas defense, you're going to put yourself in a hole again and again and again. Those things concern me because if you can't move the ball again, give Texas the ball, your defense on the field a little bit too long. Uh, I won't have much in this game. I did lean Georgia originally, but 
I think Texas is a more talented team. I think Georgia is what they are. I think expecting them to play their quote unquote best game. Well, they they didn't play that against Alabama. They didn't do that on the road at Kentucky. They they might not have done that last weekend. I, I don't think in week now it was week seven or week eight, eight a seventh game. They're all of a sudden just going to play their best game. This is sort of thing who they are. A little limited offensively against a Texas team that doesn't have many weaknesses. So I, I, the, what I got out of that, Jeff, was I'm putting you down for Texas money line limit. <laughs> Uh, right, right there in that game is, is what I what I interpreted that conversation as. Yeah, yes, yes. Put me down for that. I'll tweet it out later. Text on the money line. Yes. Uh, it's subject <laughs> to change. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love you, Will. Here, here are a couple of other things. Like just ways to potentially bet this. Uh, like you can the Georgia win total right now is nine and a half. I mean, I played over nine and a half just now. Uh, for for uh, they're throwing around minus one forty or something like that because I think even if Georgia does lose in, in Austin Saturday, I think they're going to win out. I, I think they'll beat Tennessee at home. Uh, I think they'll win in Oxford. I, I don't think Ole Miss certainly has uh, some shortcomings as well. So I think ten wins. I think ten and two is still a worst case scenario for Georgia. I think they'll be in the college football playoff, and and I wonder if there's still some value on them to potentially win the national championship. We talked about this weeks ago, how after that Bama loss, everything kind of uh, was amplified, prisoner of the moment, and their odds ridiculously drifted to like six to one, 650. Well, I still think they're probably worth worth a bet there. And I, I know, Sammy, we talked about this last week with the Oregon-Ohio State game, and we talked about it with Georgia, uh, uh, Alabama in the past. Like, do we think there is still a path for potentially Quinn Ewers or Carson Beck to win the Heisman Trophy, like, is there a way to say, hey, I don't know who's going to win, but I'm going to play uh, a quarterback at really, really tasty double-digit odds, 15, 20 to 1 uh, on these guys to win the Heisman? Because I do think potentially you're looking at the winner of this game being either undefeated number one Texas at the end of the year or 12 and 1 SEC champion Georgia, and, and that might trump all, do you think? We've seen the dip in the last, you know, two of the last three weeks. People buying the dip on Milrow before the Georgia game, he becomes the favorite. People buying the dip on Gabriel before the Ohio State game, they win, he becomes the favorite. As cool as the stories are for Ashton Genty and for Travis Hunter, these quarterbacks on power programs, when you can find them in the 10 to 15 to 1 range, we've seen huge slashing of prices on Bruce and the Bear literally last Friday you said Carson Beck at 30 to 1 now he's you know he's not even close to 30 to 1 so you always want to buy the dips on these high profile quarterbacks one more thought on this game and I don't know if this spins forward into Georgia and Texas but we've seen two top five games so far and I know it's a very small sample size Jeff but Oregon Ohio State is 32 to 31 Alabama and Georgia is 41 to 34. Those games aren't even close in terms of the total, you know, over by at least a touchdown or more. Uh, The total in Ohio State, Oregon was like 53, 54, and it lands in the 60s. Maybe there isn't an elite defense this year in terms of like the best teams in the country. I think offense has clearly lapped defense. And look, Georgia's got a very good team. I don't know that Georgia has a very good defense. And it's very hard to constantly replace four, five, six NFL guys every offseason. Georgia's defense two years ago, top of the world, shut everything down. This year, they give up 41 to Alabama. And, and look, Texas had every chance to let Oklahoma score touchdowns. Oklahoma beat itself. Oklahoma had good field positions multiple times. I have a feeling the Georgia offense will be much more efficient and much more explosive than Oklahoma. So I see a total in this game that opened 55 up to 56. After watching two top five showdowns, I don't know that I want to bet an under, at least at this point in time. Well, Will mentioned it, right? Like we're seeing these games now where the offense is just ahead of the defense in major matchups. Think about all the professional players Georgia has and and, and Texas have at those wide receiver positions. If you can block it up just a little bit, those guys are getting open. It's just what Oregon did, right? Just block it up and run behind Ohio State's defensive backs. At some point, these defensive backs only have so much they can do. 
because of the the width of the field and the athletes that everyone has at these major programs. I'm with you guys on sort of the idea of an of an over in these major matchups because these skill guys are just so good. And in a team like Texas, I'm not saying they didn't do this against Oklahoma, but they can sort of save things and use it in a game like this. Like they, there's plenty of things they ha- they may or may not have done so far that that Georgia has not seen. So it's what Oregon did. Oregon left a bunch of stuff um, in the playbook for the first five weeks. Then it comes out of week six and and debuts this passing offense that Ohio State had not seen before. So Texas has that ability to do that. I'm not sure Georgia quite does, but I think Texas can score as much as they want in this game if their offense line can protect. And they've done a good job so far this season up front. Will, riddle, riddle, riddle me this, Will. Let me, let me ask, throw this out at you. Is there potentially value on uh, Texas to miss the college football playoff Ooh. at around plus 190 or so? We all think their defense is fantastic. But if you look at the Power Four teams that they have played, Michigan, completely inept on offense, don't have a quarterback. Oklahoma, completely inept on offense, don't have a quarterback. Mississippi State might be right there with Purdue, who scared the shit out of us last week and nearly beat in Illinois uh, um, amongst the the worst teams in the country. If they were to lose this game, that that, that Michigan, I assume, is going to lose four games at least and fall out of the rankings. Vandy next week, they should beat. Arkansas is a tricky game on the road. We've clearly seen the Razorbacks able to beat some teams in in, in Fayetteville. And then they go to A&M Thanksgiving weekend. Like, there's a chance that Texas could be nine and three or ten and two without a ranked win. Like you can get under ten and a half at night at, at a nice price. Like I said, like plus windy, well, plus one ninety or so, and then a no on to make the college football playoff. Are either of those attractive enough to you to take a chance on on that going into this weekend? I, you might be onto something there. I when you initially said Texas to miss the playoffs. I was thinking maybe like plus 250 or three to one. I'd like a little more than plus 190, but you laid out a pretty good, uh, a reasonable path here for them to stumble and actually miss. And I think, I don't know, maybe next year I just need to do a better job of looking at these odds to make or miss every week. Because like you and I are in Connecticut. These markets aren't as readily available oh. in this state as others, but there's got to be some meat on the bone because you see some wild, wild swings in these markets. So uh, I, I would agree with you. And I think, you know, to, to drop back to the Heisman, I think last year, I know we all had Purdy MVP and we all, a, a few of us had Bo Nix for the Heisman. Are we looking at a deja vu with Oregon quarterback, going into the conference title game where all he needs to do is win and he secures it. Because if you look at the Oregon schedule, Jeff, I I know you're going to say, Hey, don't jinx us all that. There's not a lot of losses or potential losses. And if they're undefeated, I mean, these voters are, are pretty simple An undefeated Oregon quarterback heading into a big 10 title game. He might be playing for the Heisman that night. Is that fair? Or you don't think so? Jeff doesn't need to look at the Oregon schedule. Well, Bear, yes, that's done yeah. for him. Bear, Bear, Bear already picked Purdue on Friday night, so we know where, where his where his head is for this game. Uh, look, you're probably right about the schedule and you know the pitfalls. Uh, we go to Michigan a couple of weeks. That that might be difficult because of their defense, but they can't move the ball. We got to go to Wisconsin in the season. They're playing better football, but yeah, I mean if they're twelve and zero. Gabriel's going to be in New York, right? Um, and the question is who joins him in New York? I think we all agree that Travis Hunter, if he's healthy, which I think he's going to play this weekend, they've said that he'll be in New York and Genty will be in New York. So who's the fourth guy, right? Who's the guy that Gabriel's competing with uh, for that spot? I, I don't really have a great answer. If Quinn Ewers wins this weekend, it's probably him as of right now. Uh, but th- this market feels um, very fluid each week. And I'm with you guys. Genty might be the best player in all of college football, him and Travis Hunter. But what does Boise State have to do Bear to for him to win the award, he has to rush for a record. I just they, they have to the be record, yeah, eleven probably. and one, eleven and, and one, and win every game. And, and yeah. I don't think they're going to win when I'll be twice personally. He can he can break the record. I feel like that that feels very doable. But yeah, if they're ten and two, is is he in? Is he in no. New York? No, uh, in New York, yes. Okay, he'll, he'll be he'll be he'll be getting a lot a lot of second and third place votes. But I uh, they they have to win out beat UNLV the regular season, potentially beat UNLV again uh, in the Mountain West Conference Championship mm-hmm. game, I, I think, for him to win the Heisman, right right or wrong. I mean, I know the, the, they're, it's, it's funny. That's a, a big topic um, in the, the big noon kickoff group text uh, thread that I'm in uh, with, with the guys like Brady and Matt and Mark are like emphatic that he can win, he can win. I, I think they may be being a little bit prisoner in the moment that his numbers are great and they're not seeing – 
the long game, like Sammy just said, about these power four quarterbacks, uh, Wilson, undefeated uh, Dylan Gabriel playing for us. Like, I, I think there are other factors that they're not really handicapping the voter uh, as much as they are uh, realizing that like we all know uh, that Ashton Genty is a hell of a player. But the, the other game in the SEC, which is really intriguing this week, uh, traditional third Saturday in October, uh, Alabama at Tennessee a couple of years ago, Tennessee snapped a long losing streak in Knoxville, uh, beating the Crimson Tide. Feels like Alabama, I don't want to say that they peaked, but uh, last week was a very, very sweaty game. They had that game uh, wrapped up, it appeared, and then a, a great onside kick by South Carolina. Uh, survived the two-point conversion. The Tide minus three right now, uh, total 56 and a half, 57 around there. I I want to take I would love to take Tennessee here and I know the Alabama defense has been bad. Tennessee would be the side that I would take, but I just worry about Nico how he has been very poor uh, in the SEC game so far. It was not great against Arkansas and really str- didn't play great uh, at Oklahoma either and then and then struggled again last week against Florida. So I have my concerns that he's starting to see some things that he didn't necessarily see uh, against Austin P and Kent State and, and some of the directs that they played early on in the season. But I don't know how good you can feel about Alabama. Like, I think there are a couple of different ways you could potentially play this as well. Like, uh, there's an Alabama under nine and a half wins out there at plus money. And if you look at Alabama's schedule, uh, they've got the game against Tennessee this week. Uh, they got a game against LSU coming up. Uh, they already they already have the the one loss. Uh, they got a game uh, against Missouri. Like the next three games are at, at Tennessee, home Missouri, uh, at LSU, and then Oklahoma's defense is good. Who knows what their quarterback situation is going to be? Yeah, I think Alabama under nine and a half wins at plus money is a good way to play this. Or if you think Tennessee is going to make the playoff, a lot of times you see those markets maybe have a little bit more value. But if you look at uh, I make miss playoffs. The price on Tennessee to make the playoff is not as good as the money line in this game. So if you think the Vols are going to make the playoff, obviously they have to win this game to do that. And the the plus price there on Tennessee to make the play uh, to win this game is better than the plus price to make the playoff. So if you like the Vols to make the playoff, I would just play either the money line on Tennessee to win this game, or Alabama under nine and a half wins because I, I think if the 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 Tide lose this game. Uh, I think there probably is another loss either uh, against uh, LSU and Baton Rouge or at home against Missouri. But uh, my gut says Tennessee is the right side in this game, Sammy. Well, I disagree with you. Uh, sorry, Bear. I, no, I you're, you're it. allowed to disagree with me. That's that's why we love the chat. We like to go back <laughs> and forth and, and get di- different opinions. A lot, I'm sure a lot of people out there are going to disagree with me because my, my picks last week uh, – on the show and we weren't necessarily great. I just think I had Tennessee pegged pretty well a couple of weeks ago. And looking back, I think I made the right bet taking seven and a half with Oklahoma. They just couldn't, they just Mm -hmm. couldn't move the ball. If I would have told you that Tennessee would score 25 points in that game, you would think you'd cover seven and a half more times than not, but it's 25 to 15. They make the change at quarterback. They bring in Hawkins raw off the bench. It didn't go right. But then the next two games, they lose at Arkansas as a huge favorite. And then they barely escape against Florida as a 14 point favorite. So I was just a couple weeks early on the Tennessee fade. And to your point, I got DraftKings up right now, Tennessee minus 145 to miss the playoff. So favored to miss the playoff. This is also, guys, a really weird spot for me because I made a couple calls yesterday to some bookmakers in Vegas, and I said, what's up with with Alabama? What's going on with Alabama? Where's the money at? What are you seeing? And the quote that I got is very funny. The public is starting to shun Alabama. The public is looking to bet against Alabama. And when was the last time we could say that? I mean, this is, if you think about it, this is a cheap number to lay on Alabama on the road. So if you're not a Tennessee fan like me and Nico's stock has, has slid way, way down for the Heisman, Tennessee has not looked good. I would argue in what 14 of the last 16 quarters they played. Um, Well, maybe not that many. The last three games is 12 quarters. So let's call it 10 of the last 12. They haven't looked great. 
Uh, they look good against Kent State because they won 71 to nothing. But the last three games, they won by 10, lost outright, and won by six. I would I would argue this is a good time to lay Alabama, play them in this game, and uh, and maybe run them back. You can't lay four dollars on them to make the playoff, but maybe a national championship bet. Who wants to play Alabama in the college football playoff? I certainly wouldn't. And you know, to win the whole thing right now, you could find Alabama at ten to one. I I would rather bet Alabama at ten to one than bet Tennessee to make the playoff at plus fifteen. Yeah, to me, Bama hasn't looked buttoned up. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, you can make plays against them defensively. Uh, their defense just not as sharp. And they just, uh, ever since that win against Georgia, they just haven't looked like uh, you'd expect. As far as this game, uh, look, you could talk me into absolutely any result. Bama wins through by three touchdowns. I wouldn't blink. Tennessee wins by three touchdowns. I wouldn't blink. Anywhere in between. Uh, I just don't know what to make of either team. Very disappointed with Tennessee last week. I thought that was a get-right spot. I thought they'd have that number covered by halftime. I don't even think, I don't think we got to that game uh, l- last week uh, on this show, but I, I certainly got to it in my betting accounts and did not go well for me. Um, the, the quarterback hasn't played well, but there's flaws on both teams. There's a ton of upside with both teams. So bear to me, uh, I, I have no idea what you're getting out of this game. I guess I would just, when in doubt, take the points, take the home dog, but uh, I don't think this is a game I'll end up betting. Under 57, maybe Jeff as well. Uh, I think the best unit yeah. on the field is the Tennessee defense. Yeah. I just want to to reiterate what Cam DeBoer's teams have done in the last calendar year, basically, right? They win every game by about a touchdown or less, right? So go back to Washington last year. Seven-point win, three-point win, eight-point win, nine, ten, seven, uh, two, three, three, six, and lost to Michigan. And the last three conference games, right, they won by they won by seven, lost by five, won by two. So if I get a close game, which is what Cam DeBoer's teams have done recently, for whatever reason, right? Some turnovers, some lack of discipline. They're, they get a bunch of penalties this season. Defensively, a little discombobulated. I will lean toward taking the points in Tennessee. If this, I think it's going to be a close game, which Cam DeBoer's teams, for whatever reason, those are the reasons I mentioned, seem to play tighter games than they should. We watched Washington last season and thought to ourselves, well, that, those games should be a bigger margin. I think we agree on Alabama so far this year. This you get, can't continue. You get up. Well, yeah, that, well, that that also too. You know, Alabama was was up what thirty to seven against Georgia, and that game became a touchdown game where Georgia took the lead late in the game. Even the South Carolina game. I look, they they go up late and score. They the wide receivers are just falling down. The game is over. They win that game by one instead of two. But even then, like they get up eight points with what was under two minutes left, I think it was. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. They'll shut them down. Game will be over. No, we're right down and scored. So I, I just think that Alabama's not trustworthy to beat anyone by three points or more right now, especially on the road. Thank you for, thank, thank you at least for not suggesting teasing Tennessee up. Because teasing college football. Ooh. I thought he was Wait, going there for sure. You thought I was going to say that? You thought I was going to say that? No, no, you weren't going to say it. I uh, thought you there were. There are people, there are people out there. Like if this were an Wait. NFL game, you would say, "Okay, Kalen DeBoer and Alabama have won all, won all these close games. Uh, let's tease the underdog." We've been doing this show for a year. More than you, you can you te- teasing college football is like a uh, it's like a curse word. I was so, told by Kay here that this is our hundredth show. We've done a hundred shows together now, guys. Today, really? And that's what I, that's what she told me. In a hundred shows, I suggested zero college football teasers, and you guys thought today was the day when I was going to give you well, a college football me. teaser. I didn't think so, Jeff. I always I always got your back. I didn't Jeez, think so. I have more faith. Sammy's giggling to himself. You prefaced it with they never lose, they they never win by more than margin, and they're in all these games. So I. I thought it was a possibility. <laughs> uh, the, the, the Stanford Wong college football teaser. The the plus for the, for plus the first se- ever plus seven plus nine. What, what, what PSA, we, seven tease point tease, point tease six point tease. What are we doing? PSA ne- ne- never never tease college football unless the army when army navy then you have a total in the, like the low thirties. That's different, but ninety nine point nine percent of the time, yeah, never tease college. I would agree. I know, I know Sammy's going to tease Cincinnati down to down to pick him against Arizona State <laughs> this week. Right? I just wish some people would keep secrets to themselves. That's all I'm going to say. We could have got so much more money down yeah. on that under. If yep. they would have just waited until Thursday, that thing got blasted 53 and a half down to 49 at DraftKings. Four and a half points in 24 hours, Bear. And Cincinnati up from two and a half to six and a half now. So people just need to just, well, it's okay to just gently massage it and, and work it. And and then. But the coach bam, should announce is, today that, that, that Levitt is out, though. The, 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 yes. ma- the major move today was because the, the, the coach said, said Levitt is out, which, guys, as we know, guys, 
Arizona State's winning this game outright. Be ready for that. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be 38 35 Arizona State now, being that <laughs> and we, we, the, the dip in the under total and the rise in, in Cincinnati as well. But I, I'm going to bring up a very, very, very bad word right now. All right. Illinois. Illinois. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I knew it. Oh, geez. <sighs> All right. Let me start. Let me start. Go. Not many times will you beat a line when we talk about on this show betting minus 17 and a half and 18 that the line gets to 23 and the team wins by a point. <laughs> that, that is about as rare as it gets. And I felt so good in the third quarter. And I know Jeff, Jeff is watching the game, texting me the play by play of the game I'm watching. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, Jeff. I'm watching the same game. Oh, everybody I knew had Illinois. And look, there are going to be some things that come out of Purdue in the next couple of weeks. Uh, last Wednesday, we said, be ready for the other shoe to drop. What happened a couple of days later? Bang. Hudson Card, the quarterback, is not playing. It almost got to 24. And they have a 27-3 lead in the third quarter. I would love to know one thing from this entire college football season. What the hell was said in that Purdue locker room at half? I would pay money. I would pay money. (laughs) I would pay good money to learn what was said in that locker room for a team that had quit in three straight weeks that is down three scores, comes out and scores 46 points in the second half. They couldn't score that all season. What? What did I even watch? I don't know. I, I'm glad you guys were, were texting me because I was on the plane uh, on the way back from, from Salt Lake and just to get – and, like, I would get the text and then, like, I'd have the score app on because we didn't have the game on the uh, on the TV. And I was like, oh, no, the, the, the score – like, I'd see the play would be, like, fourth and eight. And then I'd be like, okay, make a stop, make a stop. And then I'd get the text from you guys and be like, oh, shit. <laughs> and, then, and then it was weird because at the end of the, in the overtime, like the ESPN.com score in-game game cast was like all funky. And I really had no idea what was going on. And then you guys started texting yes. And I'm like, what happened? Like, I thought like. I had no idea. And then you're like, okay, Illinois, they went for two. They did, they did hang on. They won, which was a, uh, at least they did that. But I wonder about Illinois and Michigan this week. Cause I, I think what well, I call me crazy, which I think certainly you will. I'll come back with Illinois this week against Michigan. Cause I think Michigan's offense is dreadful. Uh, I think Luke Goldmeyer has played. Re- he's been a really pleasant surprise this year in college football. I wasn't sure he was going to be able to make like the the jump to like really serviceable, good, dual threat college quarterback. But his ability to run, I think, is going to give Michigan problems. And unlike Ryan Brown, who was able to give Illinois defense a ton of problems, uh, but both with his legs and through the air again. Illinois had no tape on him, so they had no idea what to expect. Now, at least Michigan does have some film on him. But but I, I don't know. I, I think his ability uh, – I mean, Michigan doesn't have a quarterback who's going to be able to to, to do that. So I, I think I think the fact that Brown showed some ability for, for Purdue last week doesn't really translate to what Illinois is going to see from the other offenses that play this week in Michigan. I kind of confused myself in a minute, but now I kind of, kind of brought it back. I like Illinois this week. I, I think Altmaier and that offense is going to score, and I don't have very much respect at all for that Michigan for that Michigan offense. I'm going to take the Illini here plus the three and take a, a little a little sliver on the money line as well. Yeah, I actually like Michigan. I just think they're better up front, both two sides of the ball. I think they two, might two in a two in a row. First, Sammy do Sammy goes against me, and now, now you're going against. Uh, I mean, look, we can't all have the same picks. And by the way, Bear, I That's know good. Like, I'm, I'm glad we went last the same week. Picks. Weren't you as a sports fan? Weren't you a little heartbroken that Purdue didn't pull that game out and just win the game? I know you're just oh, as a oh yeah, it would it would have just been an unbelievable great story. The little plucky underdog which had quit and had lost game sixty six to seven and uh, fifty two to ten. It would, it would have just warmed and endeared my heart to see the spirit of college football. Anything can happen on any any given day, regardless of what my sports book and 
bank account would have don't, said. Don't worry, Somebody Barrett. texted me during the second half and said, what did you do to wake up Purdue? I said, apparently it took a rant on bear bets to wake Purdue up. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, 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 they took that. That's they what they played at halftime, Sammy. Sammy. They played that clip at halftime to show everyone. Look, I mean, that, that strip sack changed everything, right? Because it was a 14-point swing in 12 seconds. That's what that's what made that game competitive. Yeah. If they don't get that, it's probably not very competitive. So, by the way, Bear, I'm also on Michigan in this game. I I think Tuttle gives them a little bit offensively. They, they don't need a lot, just a little bit, and control the line of scrimmage and play defense as they normally do and just sort of suffocate Illinois. I, I think that if, if Purdue's going to run the ball like they did, I know it's quarterback-centric and whatnot on Illinois. <laughs> I think Michigan can do it with a competent quarterback. And I, I, Tuttle's not great, but I think he's better than what they've had out there. And um, – he can't be worse. I mean, I guess he can, in theory, be worse. But if they if they go from, like, below average quarterback play to, like, let's just say it's average, they'll win this game by 10 points, right? I, I, Sammy, I don't think I'm, I'm wrong on expecting if Michigan gets a little bit of quarterback play, they'll play this game really well. I don't like their coach. I'm sorry. I, I'm not laying points with Sharon Moore on the road. It's not happening in this lifetime, at least not this <laughs> season for that matter. But but to your and Will's point, I mean, this opened in Vegas. Michigan opened basically a pick em. One book opened the pick. Another one opened at one. And it got slammed. So we saw the move on Sunday and Monday, you know, out to Michigan three. One book has a three and a half. Bear, I don't know that we get to three and a half, four everywhere. But I, I don't think there's a rush to take Illinois. You're going to see these expensive threes go to three and a halves. Even DraftKings has Michigan three minus 112. Pinnacle minus three minus 15. So if you're on the Illinois side, you might as well wait because the market is telling us right now we are going through three. So, you know, if you're a Michigan person, you okay. might want to lay a cheap three, lay the three minus 105, three minus 105, three minus 10. And if you're an Illinois person, um, which I, I sort of lean to that side. I would I would wait, and you might get the hook. You might get a four. Well, were you gonna, were you going to add anything else after you uninvited yourself from the next trip to across the Massachusetts border to stop at Dunkin' Donuts, grab grab an iced tea, and then drive on down by the lake and on the side of the road and and fire it fire in some bets where we can actually bet more. No, I think we covered it. I think we covered it on that game. I'm I'm happy that uh that Illinois won and uh it's too bad too bad they couldn't get home. And that's why, man, you get some of these six, seven point line moves. I know there's differing theories of like, hey, just let it ride. You got the good number. Other people go for a middle and buy back. Ah, boy, you get these big line moves. It's just hard for me to resist sometimes the buyback and just try to shoot for middle because, man, these line moves, I and mean, it's worked a lot this season against us where you know we had good numbers. Uh, what was it? Utah, Oklahoma State, some of these other games where you're ahead of the number, you're ahead of the info, and it doesn't get home. It's just so frustrating. It, it, it is, and we'll we'll see if what, what happens here with the Illini this week. And I'm really curious to see what happens in that Arizona State-Cincinnati game, even with Jeff Sims as the starting quarterback for the Sun Devils on Saturday. Uh, now we're going to move on to the, the location of the Big Noon kickoff this week uh, in Nebraska at number 16 in undefeated Indiana. Uh, the Hoosiers are a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Um, the undefeated Hoosiers, and one of the questions uh, on the Super 6, sponsored by DraftKings, is what will the outcome be this week? Which undefeated team will lose Miami, Indiana, Texas, or, and they did it again. They did it again with none. <laughs> no, you, no, none is not an option. You, you've got it. You got it. You, you, you can't say none. That's a, that's a cop-out answer. So super spring, super six sponsored by DraftKings, which undefeated team will suffer its first defeat? Miami, short favorite at Louisville, Indiana, home favorite uh, against Nebraska, Texas, short favorite at home against number five, Georgia, or if you want to be soft and say none, you can go out and say, you can go say none. But we'll have our column uh, later in the week. I kind of like the Huskers plus the uh, the points this week. And I, I know Colorado is a little bit different of an offensive team than Indiana, but Nebraska did an unbelievable job uh, shutting down that Colorado offense. And I know Indiana is <laughs> a little bit more dynamic. Uh, they, they can run the ball a little bit more, but, Six and a half feels like a lot to lay here with the with, with the Hoosiers, Sammy. I, I can I think Nebraska's defense is pretty good. I know Royal is probably going to go on the road and maybe make some freshman mistakes, but uh, feels like a lot of points here to be laying. 
You want me to answer the question first, or do you want me to answer the game? Oh, I, 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 you can answer the question first. The question, I'm going to answer Texas. I think Texas has the best chance to go down because they're playing Georgia, because it's not Nebraska or Louisville. I wish Louisville would show me something. It just it hasn't really happened they're this year. So I'm really going to default defensively. to Texas, Georgia, in terms of the uh, the question. Um, as for um, Indiana. Two things. Number one, I believe the first time ever big noon kickoff will be in Bloomington, Indiana. Correct. Number two, the teams that Indiana has beaten so far, Florida International, yeah. Western Illinois, UCLA, Charlotte, Maryland, Northwestern. Meow. It has not exactly been a murderer's row of opposition. I still like their coach a lot. I love their quarterback. Their offense is so good. I was actually thinking about this. Because I'm not going to lay six and a half. This game opened four in Vegas, Bear. Opened four, out to six and a half already. We might get to seven. I was I was playing out Indiana's schedule, though. And there is a world where, okay, they win this game. Maybe they don't cover. But if they can beat Nebraska, then they get Washington at home. Then they go to Michigan State. They can win all three of those games. I know I'm putting things ahead of the mm -hmm. cart here. But if they're 9-0... and and welcome Michigan to town, and they win that game. Is Curtis Rourke a Heisman candidate? I, I, I really wonder that, because if you look at his numbers and you compare him to the Cam Wards and the Milrose and the Becks of the world, he's right there in yeah. terms of efficiency, in terms of yards per game. He's got, I think, 14 touchdowns to two interceptions. I'm going to look that up and, and verify you're those right, numbers. You're right. You're right. He's, done, he's done everything right. For a team that could realistically be 10 and 0 going into Ohio State. And if he can put numbers up in that game, I don't think they're going to beat Ohio State. But if they lose by a touchdown and Indiana is 10 and 1 with a loss to Ohio State, is, Curt is Curtis Rourke potentially going to New York? I wonder that out loud and I ask my friends. New York, maybe. I, 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 if they don't beat Ohio State, he's not going to win. I'm excited to see him in the Big Ten Championship game. So it should be a lot of fun to see Indiana at that point. Um, I will say. Oh, wow. So, so, we, so you got Indiana going to the shoe and winning. Uh, no, I don't. Um, Sammy mentioned it, guys. Well, you just said the, you, Indiana's going to get the, to the Big Ten Championship the, game. The reason. So clearly they're going to beat Ohio State. The reason why Indiana is probably going to struggle in this game is they haven't played anyone close to Nebraska. We've seen this throughout the season where when a team steps up in competition, and Indiana is a, is a young, not a young team per se because they have older players, but they haven't done this together, right? It's Signetti's like seventh game. And 20, 24 and the, transfers, I believe it is. They're off a bye. I get it. But Nebraska is a huge step up in competition. They might not be altogether offensively as Rayola is a, is a rookie, a true freshman, sorry. And there are some true freshman mistakes he makes, and the offense sometimes doesn't function quite like it needs to. But Nebraska's defense is real. It's a real defense. It's number one in, 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 in SP Plus on defense. It's, it's, it's legitimate. And Indiana has not seen Nebraska yet. So, Will, I have nothing on this game as of yet, but I would certainly lead Nebraska or nothing because I think it's really difficult to finally play sort of like your first, quote-unquote, real team in, in week seven after basically playing powder puffs for six weeks. Well, I like Nebraska too. Now at six and a half, I mean, we're doing the show on a Wednesday. What's the point of betting six and a half when you could get a seven? And I think we have seen some seven starts to pop up. They just don't last very long. That's sort of a, the buy price from people that are monitoring this stuff. But I think Nebraska's defensive line can put Indiana in third and long. I think the Nebraska quarterback is better than anything Indiana's seen at quarterback so quarterback defensive line to me this is more like a field goal game how does indiana respond to hey you're, you're not chasing anymore you're you're the hunted and can they handle that role and bear i think uh i, I think you've been on a uh, kev o'neill who's a, a friend of mine listens to the show he was on my podcast this this summer gave out indiana 500 to one to make the playoffs i didn't bet it again i don't have these markets readily available boy i'm Filled with regret because that is live. I mean, if they are a one-loss team, I guess they're in the mix. I don't know if they're going to get in. But uh, to me, in, uh, you know, I'll cop out. I'll say Indiana wins the game by a field goal. Uh, I think Nebraska keeps this very close. Uh, I will end up probably betting Nebraska here plus the points. Yeah, I, 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 I will as well. I'm, I'm sure I'll take a little Nebraska uh, money line as well just in case they do uh, go on the road and Matt Rule gets a, uh, a monster win for his program uh, as, as well. So, a lot of uh, ranked teams on the road as well as the ranked teams at home. So again, this has been a, this has been a thing. You've got what 
seven ranked teams on the road against unranked teams this week, starting Friday when, when Oregon goes to Purdue. Uh, Miami is at Louisville. LSU is at Arkansas. Notre Dame at Georgia Tech. Texas A&M at Mississippi State. Kansas State at West Virginia, SMU at Stanford. So of those seven, I'm going to set an over-under at two and a half Ooh. as the number of ranked teams on the road at unranked teams uh, that are, will lose outright. Who, 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 wants, who wants to go over? Who wants to go under? So I'll say, ooh. what you, you mean? You got pretty annoyed when the option of none. So I'll just say push. I'll say a put, we get two wins <laughs> at a time. <laughs> yeah, two, two wins. <laughs> at a time. I'll go over. But what I like the, the one at least I'm at least uh, the most interested in is Arkansas because that coaching staff off of a bye, the emotional win for LSU, and that was a just a horrible, unspeakable loss for Ole Miss. You cannot lose that football game. My goodness, I know everyone loves Lane, but that's a horrible loss. Uh, does LSU bounce back on the road? Can their Defense operate without the home crowd sort of lifting them up. I think Arkansas behind green, behind that coaching staff, wins that game now. You missed the best of the number. I think it's two and a half as we're recording this now. But Arkansas is a fascinating game, Sammy. Certainly is. I I think this uh, Notre Dame-Georgia Tech game, it it doesn't sound like Haynes King is is trending in the right direction. I'm not going to call my shot and say he's not playing. But this number opened, I believe, in Vegas at eight. Yeah, opens ND eight. It has been bet up to 11 and a half and 12 bear at Georgia tech. I don't need to tell you that is not the punter or the kicker. That is a move indicative of a banged up quarterback. And they don't really have much in terms of backup depth. So you now there are a couple quarterbacks this week that are banged up and we've seen the market move already. I mean, we taped this on a Wednesday and Notre Dame has moved three and a half, four points. It's Haynes King at Georgia tech. It's cam Fancher at Florida Atlantic. Uh, Tom Herman was a little mum about his status. The rumor Cam there rising. is turf toe. Cam Rising, I heard he might play, he might not. I heard he's a game time decision. <laughs> game time decision this yep. week. And then here's another one. I know I'm not answering your question directly, but did anybody see the video of Diego Opavia limping late in the game against Kentucky? Yes. So that that's another rumor that's been swirling in the last 48 hours. They have Ball State coming up, Vanderbilt. Yep. And the number is, you know, in the high 20s. It's actually five and a half right now. I, it, I, I bet it at 26 and a half yesterday. So I just I don't think that they're going to push him full throttle. I'm not saying he's not going to play, but those are the three names that I, I basically circled this week. And then you help with the Sam Levitt stuff. So quarterback uncertainty is a huge part of my life. And it Haynes looks- Haynes King at Georgia Tech, Fancher at Florida Atlantic, Pavia at Vanderbilt. And then who was the last one? Oh, Levitt at Arizona exactly. State, which you already helped with. So that's sort of where I'm at. I would love Haynes King to play for Georgia Tech. Me too. I just I don't think yeah. he's going to. And if he's not, I can't bet them. And Notre Dame, obviously, uh, Benjamin Morris in their best uh, defensive back out uh, as well. It feels a little bit underish uh, to me. If indeed, hey, I, I would rather play under than I would lay 11 and a half, 12 with the Irish uh, in that game, just because I still don't trust Notre Dame's offense. But Circling back quickly to, to Vandy and, and why I would still bet it at 25. I know Ball State is terrible, but here, here's Vandy. Last three games, you lose the heartbreaking overtime game at Missouri. You beat Alabama, and then you come back and you go to Kentucky and win. Now you've got Ball State the week before you host number one Texas. Like, like you, you're, you're Vandy, and you can't overlook anyone because you did lose at Georgia State. But it is only natural that this is kind of a take a deep breath type of game for them, and like just go out, win the win the surest way, play, play these guys just enough uh, to get enough of a margin against a bad back team before you get Texas coming to your place next week. So I, I agree. This, this is like the ultimate sandwich everything sandwich let down look ahead encompassed all into one here sammy i i I agree with you there oh i just wish will and jeff i wish ball state didn't lose 62 nothing to miami and 63 7 to james madison that makes it it makes it a little bit tougher to take the the only thing is like what are Vanderbilt? I guess if they just run the ball all game if, if diego doesn't play or if he's if he's hurt you just hope the time runs out is they might be able to score in the 40s themselves just running the football, right? I mean, that's more concerned about that. Is Vanderbilt, I mean, uh, Ball State can't stop anybody, as you just mentioned, Sammy. 
And if Vanderbilt decides to run the football all game, you just hope, I guess you have to hope the time runs out so Ball State can cover. Because that, that's my concern about taking Ball State in this game. Yeah, I, I think the three is like Will was saying, going back to LSU, Arkansas. I think they might be gone for good because if you look at the situation here, it's kind of exactly the situation a couple of weeks back when Arkansas upset Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee coming off the emotional win with Josh Heupel going back to Norman. Uh, they beat Oklahoma. The following week, they, they go to Fayetteville and, and get upset as a big favorite. Now you got LSU, big emotional upset comeback win in overtime last week at home uh, against Ole Miss. Now you're going on the road again, Fayetteville, Arkansas, off of, off of a, an idle week. Like it, It's a brutal, brutal spot, I think. For LSU, I, I would play some Arkansas money line as well, uh, just because I, I don't think you're going to get three. And here's one other little potential uh, look ahead spot in, in the SEC Texas AM laying that what, 15 and a half uh, on the road at Mississippi State, who kind of just they really were never in the game last week against Georgia. They're terrible. But, but again, you got AM. Two weeks back, you had the, the game in, in Dallas where they survived Arkansas. Low out Missouri a couple weeks back. Idle week. Now you're on the road. Massive favorite against the worst team in the league the week before you host LSU. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I want to lay 15 and a half here with, uh, with the Aggies, who, by the way, I think are pretty good and might be college football playoff. But I think if, if AM does beat LSU next week, I think there's a really, really good chance that this team is in the playoff. We yeah, I could see that. And it's funny, you go through these accounts uh, in bets you made over the summer or last spring, and some some of them are really uh, good. Some are embarrassing. And I remember the Notre Dame offensive lineman got hurt, and the lineman move, I missed it. So I bet AM to make the playoff figure. And, hey, I, if they win this game, if AM wins, then they're in good shape to make the playoff. And then it might get home sort of by accident. So it's just funny how these bets play out. So uh, I don't know. I, I would take it before I laid it. I didn't uh, I, I didn't look at this game. But, Barry, you haven't answered the question. Over, under, two and a half wins. How many How many are we getting here? And, and you also sort of buried the lead here. You're going to be in Indiana for big new kickoff. What What's on the menu? Where are you eating? White Castle, for sure. Is, is there a White Castle in Bloomington, Sammy? Oh, there's definitely one near Bloomington. I can tell you that much. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna have to check. How this. do you know that? What do you have a map See, of? I, I, the I know. I know. There's one right near Lucas Oil in Indianapolis. There's I know. I've one. walked there. I've walked there from Lucas oh, Oil. Oh, so have I. <laughs> so so have I. I, I, I. What I could do <laughs> is have the, uh, the 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 car stop. From on the way from Indianapolis Airport to Bloomington. Let's see. I think their location, Bloomington, Indiana. Last time we talked as much about whoa, 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 whoa. About Here food. We we had, someone there, sent, sent us some white 32, castle. 3233 West Jacob Drive, Bloomington, Indiana. Bang. <laughs> Heaven awaits. Why have we not had White Castle show up at our studio yet? Just I, I know there's there is, there's one up on Fordham Road. I've never had one. I've never had one. They, they, they need to bring. They need to bring a sack down for us, Jeff. I think there's one on 17 across the river too. I used to drive by all the time. Leaving oh, the, I know. The, I know the there facility. is. Whenever, yeah. whenever we used to, have, we we would do um, the Thursday night Amazon games, and I was working with Amazon. Uh, I would stop there, fill up, fill up my tank right there, uh, and get get a little late night late night nosh for the uh, for the ride home. <laughs> but I, I 3233 West Jacob Drive, Bloomington. You will be seeing me. Uh, either either tomorrow or but tomorrow probably because Friday Friday we got a nice um, <laughs> a nice Italian uh, dinner planned somewhere. Tomorrow night is Uptown Cafe with the Game Crew. I don't know if I'm gonna get in town in time to do that, but uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, no there there will there will be a White Castle uh, <laughs> visit now because I, I knew the one on um I, I knew I knew the one just near the airport, but uh, now that I know it, we have one uh, in. In Bloomington, that makes life much easier. But to, to go back to the other question, Will, I'm going over two and a half. I'm going over two and a half. I, I think we're going to get Arkansas for LSU for sure. And then I think we get two of three, uh, Louisville over Miami and West Virginia over Kansas State. How about, how about that? I, I will go over two and a half and I might even be able to get a little plus money on that. It's not bad. 
not to uh not to uh steer us off track here but oh, uh, we this is something we're, 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 we're way off track will castle location we're way off track the, don't worry i think the track has long been steered don't off worry. well I, I mean that's that's the proper track i'm saying i'm taking us off that track which is uh it's not a good direction we've talked about this in our our group text what is with these friday night upsets and are we looking at another one oak state byu byu Look, great season, great story, but they're nowhere near as good as their numbers. A lot of it is turnover luck. Last week against Arizona, look, I, you and I have Arizona under wins bear. Was happy they got that win, but the yardage was just about even. Oak State, this is kind of a now or never try to save their season type of game. I, I don't know. Do you guys think there's anything to Because we've seen a lot of Friday night upsets, whether it was uh, what, Syracuse, UNLV, Stanford, Syracuse last week. Uh, we got the one with uh, Maryland Northwest. I mean, there's been a lot of these. Sammy. I don't know if you guys think there's anything to this. Yeah, Utah went down last week too, right? Yes, Didn't Utah point. go down as a favorite? Yeah, yeah, Cam Rising, Cam Rising got hurt in that game as well. I don't want to. Can we not talk about Cam Rising ever again on this <laughs> show? What a waste! What a waste <laughs> of time that's been for the last two years. It sounds like Oklahoma State is going to make a quarterback change. I don't know if it's going to be Rangel or Flores. That's the rumor out of Stillwater. So we'll pay attention to that. That's a Friday night game. Well, I will be taking the late night Nevada ride at ten thirty Eastern. Nevada getting two and a half. <laughs> I will be doing that. Mikey Keene has never won a game that, that matters in college. Every year, Mikey Keene and Fresno State get to a certain point, and it's a must-win game, and that kid finds a way to get hurt or throw a back-breaking interception. I will be on Nevada. Jeff, are we taking Purdue money line? Oh, yes. Come on. Yes. Yeah. I, th I think we are. No. Look, I, Purdue first half though might not be a bad wager. I don't. I mean, I wouldn't. Have, I'm not going to do it. But I, there, I don't. It's very natural for Oregon to have a letdown this weekend at Purdue, right? Like, we understand that. They're better. They're going to win the game. But to have the win they had Saturday night, short week at Purdue, the showed a little bit of life. That might just be sort of a one-half thing. Um, I could see this game being a little bit close for a little bit of time. And eventually we eventually we win. We also just haven't covered a lot of these big numbers, guys, right? We didn't cover UCLA. I don't think we covered Michigan State. Um, we did cover against Oregon State. We didn't cover Boise State. We didn't cover Idaho. So we have not been a team that's covered big numbers this season. So, um, you know, Purdue plus the points is probably the, the safe wager here, maybe even a Purdue first half. I don't, I don't want to lay it, but how does Purdue stop them? Purdue's no. not good. They're just not no, good. No, I don't, I no. don't know Oregon what should, happened. Or, I don't know what happened in that I, second half. I, I have no I, idea. I, I, look, I think I told you the, the, the strip sack changed the mentality of both sides of that ball, right? Now, Illinois is like, oh, wow, this is really a game. They didn't expect it. They expected to sort of coast, and Purdue thought they had they, they had a chance to win. That's I think it's that simple, Sammy. It's great. I, I didn't expect it either, but that's how it went, and I think Oregon can ball up Purdue, but plus the points is probably the way to go here. By the way, you mentioned the, the the Nevada ride. That was another game last week that they I mean they 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 bet Oregon State like they had Sunday's paper, and the and the old Wolfpack yes. two words got the uh, they did yeah got the outright upset. A number of food. Um, By the way, Washington State guys is going to be eleven and one most likely. Uh, no, no playoffs for them, right? They they can't do no. it at eleven and one. No. No. Okay. No. No. If they had beaten no. Boise, they, if they had beaten Boise, they would have had a chance, but they lost to Boise, and, and they don't there play. Goes. Conference championship there goes game. Michigan's team, three and a half all over the country right now. Wow. There it is, oh, Barry. There so it is. Words, so in other words, Kyla and our, and our and our production staff are streaming this live right now when they know I'm on Illinois, so now everyone's betting oppo. <laughs> this is what happened last week. We Sammy gave out Illinois between like 17 and 19, and then it went all the way to 23 in, in 24 hours. So Bear Illinois wins outright. They have to get it back for us after last week. You know they that. They, they 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 owe us that after putting us through that absolute emotional torture and financial ruin of uh, beating beating the line by six points and and nearly losing the game outright. But uh, anything else uh, on on the cards for 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 you, uh, Will Sammy? Before we uh, let you go. I mean, part of this is because I have a lot on Houston, I think under four wins, but Kansas has just not looked like Kansas. Uh, they have not covered any of these spreads. They certainly miss Colton Nicky, the old offensive coordinator. Jalen Daniels does not look the same. Uh, I think you're giving me Fritz. You're giving me a good defense. I think uh, I think Houston could be live to win that game. If you're looking, I, I know people like to take some of these money line underdogs and just throw them in around Robin. That could be absolutely. a team that could absolutely win. Uh, I was, I was laying six on the road to Michigan State. I kind of don't get that. I, Michigan's off a bye, I guess, but... I was 
a lot better than Michigan State. How does Michigan State score in this game? I mean, Iowa's offense, I know we like to mock them, but against everyone but Ohio State, they've actually scored a decent amount of points. Uh, Michigan State's not good. I, I know it's on. they're on the road, and they're off a, I guess, a big win. As a Beating Washington on a big new kickoff is a big win. I, I, I sort of guess, but Michigan, <laughs> excuse me, Michigan State is not a good football team. That, that number is interesting to me. Washington should never attempt another field goal the rest of oh. the year. Well, well, they always make them against Oregon, so that's good to know. When we have time to play us, they 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 manage to make all their field goals. It's awesome. They just bet Texas to five too, so they came in bet Michigan, and they bet Texas in the last wow. three minutes. Texas a five point favorite now that, oh, against that, Georgia. That feels. A lot, I wonder a if that's a setup to take the five or whatever, or t- not that you'd want five, but I don't know. I would think it. Th- I would think at this point on Wednesday afternoon, limits have gone up, though, right, Sammy? Yeah, maybe. can't be much higher than five, though, guys. I mean, it, it can't go to That's six, can it? Ridiculous. Like, like is, did, did Carson Beck tear his ACL in practice yesterday or something? And so someone, someone got wind of it. Cannot confirm oh. or deny that at this point in time. No, I, 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 I can't. Wow. It went to five. <laughs> DraftKings, Texas minus five, right here. Total circa, fifty-six. Circa minus five. Bookmaker minus five. Yep. So he's super, super, super book minus five. Huh? Jeff's going to be teasing him up to eleven. Yes. <laughs> how'd, how'd you How'd you know, Will? I'm doing, I'm doing it right now, actually. Well, or you could just I, go through zero the other way and take Texas minus one, right? Or Sammy, Texas plus I've, one, right? I've made no wagers in this in this entire show, which I know is, is shocking to you. What What's a wager I should make right now? As we as we get to the end, I think- I like I like Auburn. Auburn getting four and a half against okay. Missouri. I think Done. that's my favorite look. There we go. I have to make one wager show to make Sammy happy. Here we go, and get it in. Sorry to cut you off, Will. Some of those first touchdown bets have been cashed, and I've been seeing those on uh, on Twitter a lot. Jeff, maybe you find out the first touchdown bet you like get a little boost. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, sure. There was, was one with um. Yeah, I'll get right on that one. There yeah. was one with the Commanders. What wasn't there like Jaden Daniels touchdown that that cashed? Daniels, Burrow, only LSU players. It's weird how that works. Oh, well, LSU's got a great offense. A couple of Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks right yeah, there. That's what it is. I'm finding the right. wager. That's enough from our Heisman Trophy winning analysts right there. Uh, for Sammy, for Will, Jeff, appreciate you kicking this all around again. Another game of group chat in the books. We'll be back uh, NFL style tomorrow. And then uh, th- this Motley crew will be back to, back again on uh Wednesday to drown Jeff Sorrows uh, with, with the Purdue outright win over Oregon. <laughs> All right, Bear, back from Game Goop Chat. I'm going to make a list, Bear, every show now of every team you pick to make the playoffs because there's about 12 of them you 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 picked the show. A and M. Well, um, 12. It, it, that, that, it, see, that's right. Well, 12 tw- teams will make it. 12 plus the other ones you didn't mention that have to make the playoff. Like you didn't talk about, you know, uh, you know, Texas making the playoff. Well, actually you think you did, right? You said no on Texas. I, you, there's I, a lot I, of- said, I, I said, is there a possibility <laughs> if, if Texas were to lose this week and then they wind yes. up losing to A&M? So I, I'm, just, I'm just throwing situations. I like it. You're, it, 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 it. It's the producer in your heart. I like it bear. Okay. Um, exactly. All right. Let's go to my fade of the week here. Uh, I'm going to fade Arizona's defense against Colorado this week. And Colorado's on the road, Bear. And look, I, they play they play better than I thought they would this season, right? Close loss to Kansas State. But one mm-hmm. thing that they can do, and we know this, they can score points, right, Bear? And they Travis Hunter, I think, is going to play. They said that Horn's going to play. But Colorado, in, in conference this year, 28 points against Kansas State, right? 48 against UCF. And 38 against Baylor, obviously, in overtime. But that was 24, 31 in regulation before overtime. And Arizona's defense is just not good right now. 31 points on to Kansas State, 28 to, t- to Texas Tech, 41 to BYU. They're 73rd in points per drive. But here's the most important thing, Bear. When you play Colorado, okay, you have to hit the passer. If you don't hit the passer, Shadur is going to tear you up. Arizona cannot hit the passer, right? They have 11 sacks in, 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 in the season this year. They're 7th in Haverick. They're 113th in pressure rate. I asked a buddy of mine who covers Arizona, uh, how do they stop Shadur? They said, we have to blitz because we can't get pressure, and we have secondary injuries. Well, I, that's I, good. I, that's good, not, good not, luck. Not great. Uh, so I like Colorado here over 27 and a half points um, at Arizona this weekend. I think they win that game outright, but I'll take the points here uh, in Colorado. I, I can certainly see that. And uh, Colorado might have gotten a little little screw last week. That was pass, that was pass interference, yes. That game, which was uh, disappointing to see, especially for our, uh, our Travis Hunter, Heisman Futures. So oh. We'll see what happens there. Mm. Uh, but time oh. now for our best bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, I'll kick it off. And I am just 
This is purely a spot play, uh, a situational play. Uh, Charlotte getting 17 against Navy. Uh, Charlotte's just frisky enough, I think, to be able to score some points. It's a big factor here. Navy undefeated. They got a big one with Notre Dame next up. Uh, a massive game in, in any uh, college football playoff hopes that they may have certainly hinge on them uh, beating Notre Dame uh, if they want to be the highest ranked five team. So maybe just a little bit of a look at here for the mids uh, against the Charlotte team that they should score enough points on. But at the same time, it's a pretty big number. So I'm going to take uh, Jeff's hometown team there, Charlotte, plus 17 against Navy. Does Biff Pogey wear a cutoff shirt, Barrett, or a regular coach's polo in this game? That should be a wager. Uh, I think he's going to respect the, the respect the Naval Academy and respect the environment. Uh, I think he'll go like regular coach shirt and, I agree. and not go cut off here in Annapolis. I agree. You 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 have to respect him. All right, Bear. My best bet presented by DraftKings. I'm a stubborn mule, buddy. I can't help myself. I'm taking Rutgers minus four and again oh. against UCLA. Oh, I I look. I I just oh. at some point UCLA has to stop covering these games. I'm going to read you some numbers for the Bruins. You ready? Okay. Uh, do you mean touchdowns they have this season, Bear? Just off at the touchdowns? Can you, oh, can I, think, you I think it's like four. It's actually eight. It's four in the last four eight. games. So they're 132nd in the country in scoring, 119th in, 19th in yards per play, 118th on third down. Okay? On defense, it's worse. 134th in the country, 134 teams, third down defense. 120th in points per drive. Uh, I have a 101 in havoc rate. I get Rutgers, Bear. Is kind of cooled off a little bit. They can't throw the football. They can't move the football uh, as well as they as they have in the past. But I mean, 17-7, 21-7, 24-7. Like I, I just this is one of those two where you have a West Coast team going across multiple times those to play a 9 a.m. local kickoff. Right? This was this game is at noon <laughs> Eastern. Bear, I, I just can't quit fading UCLA, even though they're 3 0 1 their last four games against the spread with four off at the touchdowns. How are they getting to 41 in this game? I don't, yeah, I think under UCLA is, yeah. play, UCLA, their play calling it's and bad. the way they run offense yeah. is, is like to cover and keep the score down. Yes. yes. They, they, that's what they did against Penn State. Yes. Is that, absolutely. Like, I mean, the Sean Foster how are taking care of his po- alumni. How are they scoring points? Well, I, my look, 41. Yeah. Yeah, that feels unlikely. If you look at in Rutgers too, like UCLA, they're saving grace right now is they don't allow a lot of explosive runs. And what does Rutgers want to do? Run the football, right? Which could open up the pass game. Now, Cal- is Cal- is Cal- oh, Cal- how do they Cal- not Cal- have Marcus? a better option at quarterback than that kid? I refuse to believe it, that he's it, the best option it, they have at quarterback. It is frustrating this season. It seems to really stick out like a sore thumb. A lot of teams are sort of not good bear, but like average, right? A little above average that have terrible quarterbacks. Like really, like if Rutgers had... Shoot, I mean, I don't even know. Like, if they even had Ethan Garbers from UCLA be their quarterback, they'd be a nine-win team. But they, they're, so, they're so bad at quarterback, Bear. It's so bad. I hate backing them, but I can't quit fading UCLA. I just, they're not good. And they're due for that Indiana score, right? That 42-13 loss. They're due for that soon. Yeah, I just don't know if Rutgers is going to be able to put the uh the I, I It's score. scary. It's scary. I, I'm with you. But um, I'm, I'm due for some. I think I was 0-2 last week. Um, I had a good start to college football season, but last week was was bad. Ooh, yikes. Yeah, yeah. Last last week was, was some of the totals that were bad, and Illinois, like we mentioned as well, was, was bad too. But I got the yawn out, so now I'm, I'm ready ready to go. I'm ready to move on. Um, just in time for the podcast to end. So uh, appreciate Sammy and and Will as always. Appreciate you as always, the listener and the viewer. Appreciate you for following us on Spotify, Apple. Uh, wherever you get your podcasts uh, and subscribing to the Bear Bets YouTube channel as well. Check us out there. Uh, Content reminder again, Wednesday, college football, Thursday, NFL, Friday, Bruce and the Bear. Uh, Thursday, Friday, we got picks columns. Uh, We got the the study hall guide uh, usually on on Tuesday or Wednesday as well, where I kind of lay out what we're about to cover for the the week of big new kickoff. So, so many things throughout the week to, uh, to take us in. And as always, the most important thing to remember on the way out, plus you bet, the more you lose when you win.